Here's problem 8-4. The horizontal surface on which the block slides is frictionless. The speed of the block before it touches the spring is 6 meters per second. How fast is the block moving at the instant the spring has been compressed? 15 centimeters. Our k constant is 2 kilonewtons per meter. Alright, so we have a, a k that is 2,000 newtons per meter. We have a velocity that is 6 meters per second up until it hits the spring. And we have a mass that is 2 kilograms. First thing we want to do is write down our one equation to rule them all. We'll have that the kinetic energy at some point A plus the potential energy at A plus any work done along the way should equal the kinetic energy at B plus the potential energy at B. In this case, our point A is going to be the point in which the block contacts the spring and then our point B will be the point in which the spring gets compressed a certain distance x where we've determined that x is equal to 15 centimeters, 0.15 meters. Alright, so what do we know? Well we know that the uh, velocity at A is 6 meters per second. So that can help us calculate what the kinetic energy at A is. So our kinetic energy at A is going to be one half the mass times the velocity at A squared. So that's going to be one half times 2 kilograms times 6 meters per second squared. The 1 half and the 2 cancel out and this will give us 36 joules. So that is the kinetic energy at point A. What else do we know? Well, we're on a level plane so we can define our height as 0 for both point A and point B and hence we have no gravitational potential energy at point A and point B and the spring will not be compressed at point A so we absolutely have no potential energy at point A. At B we are going to compress the spring so at B we, we are going to have potential energy and it's going to be one half kx squared. We also are going to have some kinetic energy at B we're told because it's still moving so there will be a kinetic energy at B which is what we actually want to find uh, so that we can find out the velocity at B. Um, we have a spring force and, and uh, gravity, but those are conservative forces. Those are being treated by potential energy. So there is no other external forces acting on the system. So we have no work done along the way. So right now, it looks like the kinetic energy at A, which is 36 joules, is equal to the kinetic energy at B plus 1 half kx squared. Let's continue this. We know that... Um, the, well, then we have the kinetic energy of B is equal to 36 minus 1 half kx squared. That's going to be 36 minus 1 half times 2,000 times 0.15 squared. Let's figure out what that is. This is going to be 36 minus 22.5 or 13.5 joules. Nice to know. I've always wanted to know that, but we want to find the velocity of B. Since we know that the kinetic energy of B is one half the mass times the velocity of B squared, then this would be one half times two times the velocity of B squared the one half and the two cancel out, so the velocity of b is going to equal, in this case, the square root of the kinetic energy of b. So that's going to be the square root of 13.5, and that is 3.67 meters per second. So the velocity of B, in this case, is 3.67 meters per second. We got there first by writing down the one equation to rule them all and then trying to evaluate all the terms in this equation. Some of them turned out to be zeros. So that made it pretty easy. We ended up with just three terms to evaluate. 
and we went from there to solve for the unknown. That's our general approach in all these problems. Thank <laughs> you.